Okay, in this video what we're going to do is talk about isomorphisms and really what it is dealing with is figuring out which graphs are basically the same. So remember when we introduced the ideas of graphs, we noticed that it didn't really matter how we draw the graph. So what I want to do is draw two different pictures of what will end up being essentially the same graph, but I want to show the way that we can think about this in two different ways. So here we have one picture that looks like this. There's five vertices and the edges go like this all the way around and then there's also some edge like this. And we have some labeling here. The labeling of the vertices is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. Okay, so that's one graph. So another graph that we're going to draw is this one over here. And it looks like this. There's a vertex right here. Here here, here, and here. So these are the five vertices. And the edges go like this. Like that, and like that. Okay, now before I even label this graph, you might already see that essentially these two graphs have exactly the same structure. It doesn't matter that I drew this vertex out here and not inside, and it doesn't matter that I've sort of rotated the way I've drawn this. We should understand that essentially these are exactly the same graph. So we're going to want to have a formal way to describe that these are actually the same. And in fact, these are not even labeled the same as this. We have a different labeling entirely. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So maybe you were thinking about a graph that was a four cycle with some edge inside that was adjacent to two of the vertices and you were thinking and another friend maybe was thinking about the same graph but they decided to draw it this way with this labeling and you decided to draw it this way with this labeling. You want to have a way to formally describe that these two are essentially the same and that's really what an isomorphism is. So first I'm going to write down the definition of an isomorphism and then I'm going to explain the word bijection a little bit more carefully. So f bear with me, if you've never heard the word bijection, just let's uh, go through the definition together carefully. So what we say is that two graphs, two simple graphs, G and H are isomorphic So this is the word we're defining. If there is a bijection, bijection, and if you don't know what bijection means, don't worry, we will come back to that. The bijection is a map, and it takes the vertices of the first graph to the vertices of the next graph which preserves adjacency. Preserves adjacency. So let's be a little bit more precise. What do we mean by preserving adjacency? Well, specifically what it means, what this part means is that if U and V are adjacent in the graph G, so U and V are vertices of the graph G, after you map them to the vertices in the graph H, the mapping, the result, the result was this map of U, so whatever U got mapped to and whatever V got mapped to, those are the two new vertices and they must be adjacent in H, so then those are adjacent in H. And the notation that we use for isomorphisms is like this. We say if G and H are isomorphic, we write G and then we put an equals, but right on top of that equals we put a little squiggly line. And this means G is isomorphic to H. 
it's equivalent, by the way, if g is isomorphic to h, then h is isomorphic to g. So what I want to do is discuss the idea of an isomorphism by looking at the example we have and actually giving this map. It will be a bijection, and then we'll sort of be able to get a feeling for what a bijection is through the example. So let's take a look at the example we had. This is the picture right here. So when we take a look at these two graphs carefully, you might want to say that really this vertex right here, this vertex V1, sort of looks like it's in a similar position as is vertex 1 over here. And this vertex V5 sort of looks like it's in a similar position in terms of the structure of the graph as vertex 5, but be careful, you're not just going to map VI to I. Look, V4 looks a lot more similar to vertex 2. So let's try this mapping. What we're going to do is define the map, and this is a special notation. We can do it in a few different ways, but I like this notation. We can put the vertices of the first graph all along the top, v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, and then underneath we're going to put the vertices of the second graph. But of course what we're going to do is we're going to write where they're mapping to. So let me get the blue so it's clear that it belongs to the other graph. So V1 is going to get mapped to vertex 1. V2, now let's take a look. V2 does not look like 2. V2 looks more like 3. It looks like this vertex over here. So we're going to map it to 3. V3 looks like 4. V4 looks like 2 and V5 looks like 5. So what this really means is you're taking the vertex V1 and you're sending it to a different guy, vertex 1. So it looks a little bit funny because this part over here belongs to the graph G. This is the graph G. And this part over here belongs to the graph H. And our whole point is that G is going to be isomorphic to H. So I want to give a little bit of an idea for what's happening in terms of this map. What we'll do is we'll just take a look at a specific edge and make sure it's preserved. But you can do this for every edge. So I'm going to look at the edge V1 to V2. Okay, so in the graph G, V1, V2 is an edge. So we write it like this. This means V1, V2 is an edge of the graph G. So let's take a look at what happened after the map. The map, theta of V1, theta of V2. What happened when we sent V1 to something? Well, it got sent to 1. So that's really just 1. And what happened when we used the map and we uh, applied it to the vertex V2? Well, it got sent to 3. So if we're right, then the edge 1, 3 should be an edge of H. And in fact, it is. 1, 3 is an edge of H. And you can do that for every edge in the graph G. And because it always works, you'll always end up with an edge in the graph H. You end up saying, OK, that means that G is isomorphic to H. So that's the idea of an isomorphism. And now I want to discuss the idea of a bijection a little bit more carefully. So we're going to take a look at this map, this theta map that we've defined, and discuss why it is a bijection. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to select this, and hopefully I can just bring it down here. So let's take a look at this particular map in a little bit more detail. What I want to do is draw a little picture that will keep me thinking about what's happening. So I'm going to draw on the left hand side five dots. And these dots are going to represent the vertices oops, of G. And on the right hand side I'm going to draw the vertices of H. Now don't get confused the edges that I'm going to draw now are not edges of a graph. This is only a representation of the actual map. The map. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw what's actually happening in this map. Okay, first I need to label everything here. So this is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. And on the other side we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
Now I'm going to draw the map part in green. So don't get confused, these things that I'm drawing now are not edges of a graph, it's just a representation of the map. So what happens? V1 gets sent to 1. What happens to V2? It gets sent to 3. V3 gets sent to 4. V4 gets sent to 2. And V5 gets sent to 5. Pretty simple. Now this is known as a bijection. The map maps one set to another set. So this is a bijection. What is a bijection? Well, a bijection is a map that is one to one and on to. Maybe you don't know what that means, but let's write it down and discuss each of those things. A bijection is a map that is one to one. This is also often called injective and it is onto and that's often called surjective. Okay, so you're saying, all right, I don't know what bijection means and now you're telling me bijection means it's injective and surjective. Well, I don't know what injective means and I don't know what surjective means. So let's take a look at each of those in turn. So let's take a look at some examples and then we'll understand. All right, so here are the three examples from Wikipedia and what we're going to do is take a look at which ones are injective and surjective. So what, first of all, what does one to one mean? That's the injective idea. Well, that means that you're not ever going to take two distinct elements like here, three and four, and map them to the same element over here. So this one is not injective, whereas these both are examples of injective functions, where you're not taking distinct elements and mapping them to the same element over here. So that's what it means to be one to one or injective. What does it mean to be onto? Well, onto means that everything in the set that you're mapping into, that gets covered. So let's take a look. Over here, this set Y, everything got covered, so it was surjective. Over here in the Y set, everything got covered, so it was surjective. But over here, C was missing, so it's not surjective. So think about it carefully. This one is injective because you're not doubling up and hitting something twice, but you didn't hit everything. So it's injective but not surjective. So this one is not a bijection. This one over here has the opposite property. It's not injective even though it was surjective. You hit everything but there was a problem. You used two things to hit the same guy over here. So this one is not injective. The only one that satisfies both properties is this one right here. So the one right in the middle here is called a bijection. This one is a bijection and this one is known as an injective map but you cannot call it a bijection. This one is known as a surjective map but you cannot call it a bijection. So in general an isomorphism will always be a bijection and when you look at the example we had that was this right here and don't worry we saw that it was indeed a bijection when we look at the picture that visualizes this map.